This is not a war zone. These are unarmed people. It doesn't make you tough to hurt these people. Let them know. It doesn't make you tough to hurt these people. It doesn't. I don't care. I don't care about these people. I, I put in my work. It doesn't lie. It does not make you tough to hurt these people. There's nothing tough about it. Nothing. If you want to go fight, go to Iraq and Afghanistan. Let's keep but your, your history doesn't Who's in Iraq with you? So why, so why do you allow this? Why are you walking around trying to hurt people? Let's go, folks. Keep walking. Please, I'm asking the nice walk down the block, please. And I can't speak. Y'all want to shut me up. I am from New York City, and these cops are hurting people that I, I fought to protect. There's no reason for this. There's no, there's no honor to hurt an unarmed civilian, and I won't let it happen. Have a good night. Yeah! Sergeant Shamar Thomas, Colorado, New York. The rise is where the, the, you know, the crowd starts getting frantic. That's mm -hmm. when it's time to say, you know what, the crowd is getting frantic. When people are just shouting, you know, uh, we are the 99%, come right. join us. Right. These are not, you know, uh, a chance that incite violence. You know what I mean? So why, you know, the, the riot police were in, you know, in form, just walking, marching up and down the street like, you know, like it was a battle going on. And I... I, I I've been in battle. Right. It was no battle going on. Right. You know? The other side did, not only didn't have weapons of any kind, they didn't have the rocks yet. They're not no even, rocks. There's no stage at that point. Give me your assessment of the messages that are coming from Occupy Wall Street, and are you in favor of them, opposing the corporate greed and holding the banks accountable and, and supporting the middle class, principally those three? Um, I, I support everybody's view. I'm a, I tell people all the time that I, I'm not a part of any political mm -hmm. party. I'm not a part of any uh, group or anything like that. I'm an American citizen. Okay, that, so then what does this mean to you? What this means to me is that this is our time in our generation to change the, the, the greed that is in America. Like, uh, my, both of my parents uh, did 20, uh, 20 plus years in the military, and they have to find jobs now. Mm -hmm. And it's like... I, I recruited for the Marines for four months, and it's like I, I taught kids to come join the Marines. So it's like, come join the Marines, and then what are you going to do after you get out of the Marines? You know what I mean? So it's like we don't, there's, there's, no, you know, there's no place for us to go now. You know what I'm and saying? And you kind of, I looked in the police's eye, the police officer's eyes. I looked at their faces. They're not only listening. It seems like they're thinking about what you're saying. Take us back to that day. What was the reaction by these police officers who were standing around and, um, you know, were they digesting what you were saying? From my personal opinion, I, I believe that it was a mixture of, um, you know, not understanding what to do and then, you know, they started understanding what I was saying and I, st I think it started resonating with them that, you know, they really do have a duty and that that badge doesn't give them, you know, the right to hurt, hurt these people. And I think that it took a person like myself, you know, who, who has led and, and has uh, been through the trials and tribulations of war and understands what it, what it feels like to be in a, you know, an actual riot where people don't like you, you know, to speak out a, against it. And um, I think more veterans around the United States should, you know, come out and, and help, uh, not even the United States because this is uh, global, but, you know, they should go out and, and help these protesters and, uh, you know, give them a voice. Certainly, uh, you look nothing like the uh, dirty hippies we keep hearing are uh, part of this movement on Wall Street and on main streets around the country. Um, I want to ask you, today an important announcement came down, of course, by President Obama that all U.S. troops will be leaving Iraq by the end of this country. Uh, when you heard that today, uh, uh, sorry, at the end of the year, uh, when you heard that today, what was your reaction? Well, I just heard that, that news a few hours ago. I was, I'm, I'm shocked and amazed, and I applaud President Obama in doing that. We should have been going a long time ago. I hope he uh, uh, decides to uh, stop the war in Afghanistan and all other countries that we're involved in, because um, coming home to America, I don't see how, you know, the war has changed, you know, our way of life. Uh, the economy is not better. You know, people's attitudes about the wars are not better, and it, it just doesn't make any sense to, you know, continue losing innocent lives of, you know, uh, you know, uh, America's youth, you know? But put this in a little bit of perspective for me. Of course, uh, one of the main uh, demands, one of the main protests by people on Occupy Wall Street is that this system change. You have served your country. You said your parents have served this country, and this struggle is hitting you personally in that 
things are not easy for you. You're having trouble finding a job. Um, the war in Iraq might be ending for real this time. Um, but talk about what you see ahead in this country and what you really think needs to change, especially in light of some of those things you were yelling at Occupy Wall Street. Well, what I feel about it is that every American has something that they feel, you know, is wrong with the government, and we're all right. That's why they, there's no one clear message to the Occupy Wall Street movement, which is global, because we uh, globally we all have issues with the one percent, you know, uh, you know, destroying the world for the rest of us. So, you know, uh, this is the this is our opportunity to voice, you know, our opinions. And um, people need to take this opportunity and go support their local occupation because we can't leave it into the hands of senators and, and congressmen or, you know, uh, higher echelon government officials to just one day wake up and fix everything. We have to use our voices. Everything that you feel about what's going on with your government is right, and you need to go out there and voice it. Without you going down and supporting, you, you will never be heard. You will, people will continue to... Um, you know, uh, control our lives. They control the air we breathe, the water we drink, and we need to have a say in that. And without them going down to support, we will never have a say. So, um, but my, the biggest thing that I would say uh, that I feel is that the people that actually, you know, put their blood, sweat, and tears into this country need to be the ones that are benefiting from this country. We have a lot of people in this country, you know, that are not getting up at 6 a.m. cleaning the streets or going to war zones uh, fighting for their lives for, you know, $1,900 a month, and then they come home and, you know, they have nothing but, you know, a GI Bill to go to college where once you get out of college, you know, your, your odds of getting a job are still slim. So I think we need to just overall just go out and support and, and voice your own opinions because, you know, I'm just one person and I'm just a part of the 99%. I'm just, I just want to inspire people and veterans to go out and, and protect these people. Well, it certainly sounds like you are inspiring people, Shamar. Um, uh, you said you thought maybe your words were resonating with police. It seems like they're resonating uh, with people who are clicking on this video. Um, almost 2 million hits. Maybe, maybe by now it's been 2 million hits on this video. Why do you think so many people are watching this? I think so many people are watching is, is, is the words that I say and, and the, the, the passion and the emotion that I have. Like I tell people all the time, um, it's a difference when you do something and then when you love something. I have a passion for this country. I've lived my whole life, you know, um, uh, around the world on army bases where I've been surrounded by people who are passionate Americans who are very patriotic. So that, that patriotic blood runs through my veins and I, I um, you know, I'm trying to inspire people because it's like, you know, why don't you care? Why, why, why continue to allow the things that you know are wrong to continue happening? We need to do something about it, and somebody, somebody has to voice their opinion. Certainly a question a lot of people are asking. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Iraq War veteran Sergeant Shamar Thomas. Thank you, Christine.